play in other bands. I live in Tennessee, so I live uh, the country away from these guys. But um, like I said, I just came on six weeks ago. We did about two and a half weeks of rehearsals, and then um, we've done the tour. So the whole metal thing's kind of foreign to me. Um, so it's been pretty awesome. Um, the two bands we're on tour with, which is Dead Putt and Case Today, have been great. These guys have been awesome. I've actually gotten a lot closer to these guys than I thought I would. Um, I was pretty intimidated by them because I'm a fan of their artwork. I'm a fan of their band. And so when you're a fan of somebody, to actually get asked to do something with those people, it's pretty special. And it has been pretty special for me. Uh, it's just been different. Um, but I play in a band called Holland uh, and another band called The Lonely Hearts. Um, then I also do studio stuff in Nashville. Like, um, I've played on some CCM type records, the last audio drill on the record, Across the Sky, things like that. Um, so my metal credentials run really deep, actually, in case you didn't notice. Yeah. So this is like the first time for me. No double kick until six weeks ago, stuff like that. So, however, it's been awesome. You, you are a metal head. Oh, He's absolutely. I mean, I'm a metal head, yeah. I mean, I love metal music, but. You turned out as you can a tell, bunch of metal bands on the road. I'm kind of a bigger yeah. guy, and so uh, the double kick thing is uh, definitely a workout. He pulls it um, I wish I could do it year round, and I'd probably be one of you guys' size in about a year and a half or so. <laughs> but I get to go home and play country music and get fatter again, so that's cool. Um, I work at Tooth Nail Records. I do A and R out there and licensing and publishing. And, uh, so that's kind of my rock and roll best job. I Hit the road in the summers. Okay, now here comes the where the nepotism comes into the situation. Because of your job at Tooth and Nail, did that have any factor with the band being signed to Solid State? No, because like Brian was saying, I wasn't with the band until the first tour, and so the first record I already made and put out and everything like that. It was just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. And, you know, we all work in the same office buildings and stuff like that, so it really didn't have a whole lot to do with success. Summer of Darkness has been out for how long now? Two months, roughly. And how are sales going? Great. Can't complain at all. Cool. Does anybody in the audience have any questions? Yeah. Uh, on your new CD, you got a bunch of, like, you have a few uh, guest artists. Uh, can we expect anything cool like that or surprising tonight, maybe at your show? Uh, we, yeah, we've been trying to... Um, fill those spots on the songs that we do perform on tour with people that we've been on the road with, um, which were Dead Poetic and Haste the Day. And so we do play two, actually three, of the songs that have guest vocalists on them live. Uh, and I do one all myself, because it's, uh, it's manageable by myself, but the other two are a little difficult without someone. So um, Jimmy from Haste the Day and Brandon from Dead Poetic have been helping out with the other two. Yeah, how do you guys come up with your material? Like, is it just something random, or do you guys sit down and actually, like, we're going to write about this thing here? As far as lyrically? As far as everything, just like riffs on the guitar and lyrically and everything. We use PowerPoint? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, um, honestly, Ryan and I will just get together and uh, just kind of start jamming. And sometimes, a lot of times, he'll, he'll have a song already done, or I'll have a song already done. And, I'll be like, hey, check this out, what do you think? And they'll be like, nice, let's add this bridge to it, and vice versa. So we'll just kind of brainstorm. And it's kind of, it's one of those things where we're blessed to be able to like work together really easily. And we just kind of, uh, the ideas kind of flow like in a circle and just things come out. Um, With this record, uh, we all kind of, Don, Chris, McCadden, and I all kind of wrote a few songs um, individually, and then we wrote some stuff together. So it's, there's certain songs that are written pretty much uh, exclusively by one guy, and then there's a, there's a handful of songs that are written like as a band. Uh, and lyrically, I, I write all the lyrics. Um, and as far as inspiration for that, it's just daily life, things that I see, things that I'm feeling, people that I know, um, just real general stuff like that. Uh, just life as a as a Christian guy. Uh, on the lyrics, quick question on track one, um, Not Ready to Die. 
the lines, uh, 33 years could save my life, it'll take 24 more to make things right. Was, is that any kind of reference to Christ, or what is the deal with the years there? Because I doubt you're 57. <laughs> no, he is uh, 57. Yeah, you're actually wrong. I, uh, I just had a birthday in 57, as of last week. No, I did turn 25 last week, so. Um, 33 is, yeah, it is referring to Christ. Um, it's basically saying in 33 years he already did his work for all of us. So in my 24, all I have to do is accept it. Pretty much 25 now, but 24 when I when the song is done. Okay, filming, um, filming the infected video and the not ready to die videos. Uh, how was that for you guys, and um, what process did you have to go through to film those? Um, well, with the first one, we all kind of sat around and brainstormed over a, a, a treatment which is basically like an idea that you're gonna have for the video that's other than performance. And so um, we found a director that we liked, Derek Dale, and the stuff that he had done was cool. And he worked with our budget, which is probably the most important thing. And uh, we just had the idea and some of it worked out cool and some of it didn't actually. There's a lot of stuff where we shot in front of a green screen that never really made it in the video. If you look closely, sometimes we're playing like actually not playing, but some of the stuff were in front of like a green plastic tart, but you can't really tell because they kind of change the color. But anyways, it was supposed to be a little bit, uh, I don't know, cooler looking. We were supposed to be in like a forest and stuff. But anyways, we're we're totally we're totally into the last video and the new one, and we, we really actually like them both. And on the on the new one, we actually didn't have any changes. They finished it up and sent it to us, and we were cool with it. So. Our initial idea for the newest video was to have a bunch of fans there. Yeah. Um, at a location other than like a, a music club, which is really hard to do with a, a limited budget because no one wants to take the risk of having someone get hurt or something. So in that case, you'd have to get all kinds of security guards and, and uh, just guardians and people to watch, and we just didn't have the budget to do it. So, um, But we did want to do the, the video within a certain amount of time, so it came down to the, us basically just saying, let's just do a performance video and try and make that as cool as we can. And we're, we're pretty proud of how it came out. Uh, yes, what, <clears throat> what happened with training for Utopia? Um, we all just... Who's <laughs> training? No, we, all, we pretty much just uh, all went separate ways. It wasn't really like, a, okay, we're not going to play anymore, or like, all right, we're broken up as of today kind of thing. It was, um, it was real gradual. A couple of guys went back to school. A couple of guys moved away. Don and I moved away. I think the biggest thing is we had, we kind of wanted to start our design career in Seattle, and so we moved we moved up to Seattle, and that kind of just kind of ended the band. So. Yeah, things were just kind of coming to an end with it, and it was just real obvious that it was kind of time to end. It, it there was a real stagnant period towards the end of, of the band, um, with just in a lot of ways, but um, actually just it, it's a more recent. There's a more recent surge in like the popularity of it. You know, it was for a while it was just not really popular at all, and so it got really old. <laughs> I've been a fan since day one. Oh, awesome. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, there's a, there's awesome. a select few. <laughs> now, now what uh, happened as far as when you turn into Demon Hunter? There's more of a sort of popular feel to it as far as I mean, like training for Utopia yeah. just was. Well, cool. even like in the training days. We, you know, we loved hardcore and all the spastic stuff that was going on, the, the chaotic hardcore. There, there wasn't a lot of bands doing it back then. Uh, we were into all that, but at the same time, we were into like all the mid '90s, like Roadrunner bands, like Machine Head and Fear Factory and Sepultura and all that stuff that uh, that was coming out at that point. So um, we'd always been into that kind of metal and always wanted to be able. To, it's like we we're always thinking like, oh, it'd be great to have a great sounding, a well-produced metal record that had melody because. That's what we were into at the time, too. So we kind of into both. Um, it just so happens that, like, the time came and uh, we're, like, we were able to do a band like this. And so, um, I'd say that when we started listening to heavy music in general, it was kind of with the core, like, you know, metal bands like Metallica and Danzig and uh, Slayer and stuff like that. And then when we actually started to form a band, it was more of, a, we were involved in a... a not really, I guess fleeting's not the word, but it was more of a trend for us at the time when we were doing it, and we still appreciate that time in our lives, and those the bands that are doing it still, and the bands that were doing it, 
Um, but for us, it was kind of like going back to our roots that we never had a chance to do almost.